Hello, it's Tom with Digital Foundry. A lot has been said about Nintendo's new NX console this week, with sources pointing towards a hybrid design that veers more towards a handheld than a regular home console. It is interesting stuff, but of course from our perspective it's the revelation that it's using Nvidia's Tegra technology that's just as interesting, especially given what that implies for its games. And not just any games. Today we're talking about the options that, in theory, Tegra gives Nintendo for its backwards compatibility for classic titles. So, to explain. The suggested move to Tegra architecture poses a few challenges here, whether that's the X1 in the end or something a bit more powerful. Because until now, Nintendo has been really good in bringing a huge legacy of older games to each successive platform. Whether that's the Wii with the virtual console emulation for the NES, SNES and N64, or support for the actual GameCube discs and controllers on that format. The key there is GameCube titles play natively on Wii hardware, due to the Wii using a high clock version of that same IBM Power PC chipset. And then there's the Wii U of course, another case where the hardware iterated on that same Power PC design. <laughs> We're back to the NX and the shift to Nvidia's Tegra means we have to ask questions about this feature. But here's the thing, that doesn't mean we can't have backwards compatibility on the NX. Sure enough, the return of Virtual Console is a given, it's just plain old emulation there. But when it comes to GameCube and Wii game support, we could also see some classics make a return through an official emulator running on Tegra. So case in point, here we have a GameCube game, Mario Sunshine, running on the left. In this case, we're resorting to playback on a Wii U console via Homebrew to get a clear HDMI output. But crucially, it shows the game running as intended on the original architecture at a straight 30fps all the way. It's still a great looking game due to its colourful art direction, but of course runs with its native 480p resolution. Now here's the interesting bit. The closest known match for NX's proposed internals is the Tegra X1. Now it's possible we might get one better than this in the final spec, perhaps the X2, but for argument's sake we wondered if the X1 could actually handle these older games even via pure emulation. And so here it is, at centre is Mario Sunshine running on an Nvidia Shield TV. This is through the Dolphin emulator for Android, where in the centre we have it running at the original native res of 480p, but also to push the boat out at 1080p on the right as well. Now of course we can expect much closer optimization from Nintendo. All the usual caveats apply here, and we can expect so much better from the original developer with full access to its own hardware. But in terms of showing the raw power of Tegra X1, the results are really impressive. Mario Sunshine runs between 20 to 30 FPS all the way through, always with that same cap at 30 FPS. And surprisingly, there's very little in the way of a performance impact when playing at full 1080p here. It suggests we're more bottlenecked on the CPU side, but hey, it's an unofficial emulator. It goes to show these GameCube games could emulate on the NX with no original hardware required. And while it's not a guarantee, Nintendo could even improve the visuals too while they're at it. Mario Sunshine for example, and even Luigi's Mansion have art styles that hold up beautifully at full HD. And barring the dips and unusual frame pacing, something we see on most Android games locked to 30fps, the Tegra X1 holds up. It's all up for grabs, though if we're being frank we wouldn't get our hopes up for a 1080p boost. Whether or not it's technically possible on NX, Nintendo tends to stick to resolutions and frame rates first intended for each game. Based on experiences with the Virtual Console, we're more likely to get a native 480p here, if GameCube games are ever re-released on NX. So let's push the boat out a little bit with a full 60fps title now. Mario Kart Double Dash is a great example, another GameCube game that doesn't miss a beat on Wii U hardware. But with our Tegra X1 tests, well, running natively at 480p gets us within the region of the original game's performance, around 50fps. It's a gap we could see Nintendo bridge on NX with more optimization work, but when it comes to 1080p performance, this is where we do see a GPU side bottleneck. In that case, we're lucky to hold 30fps, and since gameplay actually slows with the frame rate, it's really no way to play. Overall, Double Dash runs well enough on Tegra X1 at native res, even on an unofficial emulator, and shows it's possible on Nintendo's newer machine as well. But we're talking about games from a console three generations prior to the NX. What about more demanding games on the Wii, for example, running the exact same way through Dolphin emulation on the Shield TV? Well, to be honest, we had a lot more trouble getting these to work properly, and there are plenty of crashes and bugs along the way. But we did break through with two titles, again sticking to the Mario theme. The first is New Super Mario Bros. for Wii. Now this is a handy test because all gameplay feeds sync up perfectly, thanks to a demo that plays from the title screen. And the results? Well, in single player this gets us much closer to the 60fps line occupied by the Wii U. 
but with all four characters on screen, the game struggles on the Tegra X1 with Dolphin at around 40 to 50 FPS all the way through. As you can see, much like Mario Sunshine, the resolution really doesn't matter in playback either. You can have it set at native 480p or 1080p, and it's still giving us the same ballpark values. But still, as an early indication, all this is hugely promising. If the Tegra X1 is this close to playing Wii games at 60fps without any official involvement, there's a case to be made Nintendo can make it work for NX. We actually had a go at running the newer Mario Kart for Wii as well, but with less glowing results in that case as you can see. Ultimately though, getting any of these titles running on a Shield TV involves a lot of trial and error with Dolphin builds. For the real deal, all the power is in Nintendo's hands from here. With full access to NX's hardware and the original code for each game, so much more can be done here. As for support for Wii U games, well, we'll have to see what unfolds when Nintendo announces the NX in full. In theory, porting the best of Wii U's catalogue to NX may be a better option than trying to emulate that machine. A more complex multi-core console than its predecessors made all the trickier by that gamepad component. Custom-tailored NX ports of games like Smash Bros, Mario Maker or Splatoon may be the solution here. Enhanced versions for a new console that gives these games more exposure than they received at first. But anyway, that's all just speculation for now. We will keep you posted as and when we find out anything more. But as an in theory, we hope you found this interesting. If you did, please do like and subscribe below. It really helps us along. And until next time, thanks for watching.